You and I are done with Angelica. We're getting a divorce whether you like it or not. Once you come and sign your half of the divorce paperwork, get the hell out of my house. Huh? I've no use for some pig of a wife in my house anymore. And today was your worst day for this household so far. Not only did I just come home from a very long and exhausting day at work, but I came home to no dinner cooked for me yet, and all the chores still being left alone. What makes all of this worse is that you weren't even home. You were out having fun by yourself without ever thinking about my needs. Uh, hold on a minute, Jarrett. Calm down, would you? I'm not out having fun right now. Did you not read the message I sent you before I left the house? Huh? What's this about a message being left for me? My belly started to hurt really badly out of nowhere, and so I left the house to go to the nearby urgent care to get it looked at. And from what the doctors told me, next month is looking like the time your baby will be born. So I went into the urgent care just to make sure I wasn't going to have a premature birth or anything like that. I mean, this whole morning my belly was hurting so bad and I felt like vomiting. And at the time, I just couldn't focus on getting any of the chores done around the house. So you tell me that the kid's out of you now? Nope. It all ended up just being some slight abdominal pain due to the weight being exerted on everything down there. The nurse told me that it may have seemed like the baby was on the way, but you'll know when you're about to have a baby because the pain will be a lot worse. Hearing that it's only going to hurt worse than today when the baby is ready is actually quite a scary thing to think about. You kidding me? So you just didn't have a clue what was going on then? No, I'm sure it wasn't on accident either. I bet you faked all that pain so you could get out of the house on purpose. <laughs> and now you're just lying to me about all of that so I won't get even more upset with you about slacking off today. What? I know for a fact that you never actually had any of those so-called abdominal pains. Which means you never actually went to any urgent care to get it all checked out. I'm not going to allow you to try and slack off from doing the chores by using yourself being pregnant as the excuse. I'm not lying about this, though. Why would I ever lie to you about something like that? I'm seriously starting to rethink things about you being my wife. You seem to think that it's all okay to just slack off every day and use your pregnancy as the reason for it. Even going so far as to lie about going to the doctor's office to get out of the house. You're such an awful wife, Angelica. Excuse me? Day after day, saying that you have to carry a baby and that's why you can't get any work done. All I've seen from you these last few months is you just laying around the house like a pig. Really, all you are now is a fat old loser that does nothing to make my household any better. And I'm not going to keep working a 9-to-5 job every day to support a fatty like you. Calling me an awful wife and, and a fat wife? What the heck has gotten into you, Jarrett? You do not say things like that to your pregnant wife. I'm not lying when I say I want things to get done around the house. But right now, I'm in the last phase of my pregnancy, and it's just become too difficult to get up and move around like that. Whenever I do stand up, I begin to get dizzy. And I have to hold myself up for at least a couple minutes to get that feeling to go away. Most days, I just have to stay laying on my side to avoid having to feel like I need to throw up. It's driving me a little crazy feeling this badly all the time. Well, just know that I'm at my limits with you. You and I are getting a divorce, and you're gonna like it. I have the divorce paperwork with me sitting on the counter at home, so just sign them for me and hand them in. You actually did go out and get those documents? You are seriously thinking of getting a divorce from me at a time like this? We have a baby that's on the way and we'll be here next month! Shut the hell up, fatty. At this point, I'm starting to even wonder about if you're truly pregnant or not. <laughs> you sure all that weight on you isn't just the food you've been scarfing down the past few months, hmm? Huh? Are you seriously going to say that about your own wife? I am seriously going to say that about her, after what she's been going around doing. All I can see you as anymore is the perfect example of a fat loser. But you've just been going on with this pregnancy things away, getting yourself out of having to go to work, right? <laughs> I cannot believe what I'm hearing right now. You have no right telling me something like that when you have the privilege of not having to ever carry a baby in your life. I've been working harder than you have carrying this baby around for us, making sure it's fed well and will come out healthy and happy. Well, I've had enough of you now, Jarrett. I don't want to raise my child with a father who has a mind like yours. I think I will agree to divorcing you now. Well, since the two of us are happy to get a divorce now, we don't have to worry about settlements or anything like that. That's right. 
You never bothered to think of me as anything besides a tool and wouldn't even support me with my pregnancy. Even before getting pregnant, I was starting to worry a little about what life would be like with you later on as my husband. Well, now I can see that this baby is going to be better off with only me as their parent. The only thing you're going to be raising is more of that belly fat after I leave you. <laughs> anyway, get those documents signed and then get the hell out. I'm tired of having a fat loser sitting around in my house all day, so this will be your last chance to enjoy the amenities I have here. Hey, Mom? There's someone really strange standing out in front of our house right now. Huh? I just got back from school, and as I went in through the back door, I could see some older man standing out front walking back and forth waiting for someone. And every once in a while, he'll come up on the porch and sit down for a bit. I'm getting scared by this. Do you think it's okay if I run to Grandma's house for a little bit? What's going on? Robin, you can hurry up and go back out the back entrance and run to your Grandma's house. I'll be on my way to your grandma's house as soon as I finish up the last of my work here. Okay, I'll be going then. Has that old man been trying to talk to you at all? Or have you been trying to talk to him? Not yet, and I'm not going to talk to him. I'm going to call grandma right now and tell her to have the police go to our house, and then they can take care of that man. Thank you so much for texting me about this the moment you realized what was going on. You are really smart for that, and brave. I'm going to Grandma's house now. Good luck with the rest of your work. Hey, Angelica. Where the hell are you going to be coming home from work today? How much longer are you going to make me wait here for you? Huh? Jarrett? I've been waiting the whole day here for you to get home from work. You still haven't come home yet. It's gone six now, so hard hell up. And that's what's made all this a lot more frustrating for me, is that the police have now been questioning me. I'm not playing around about all this now. W wait a second. So the old man that's been pacing back and forth outside my house all day has been you this whole time? Pacing back and forth? I've just been waiting for my ex-wife to come home so that we can hang out. What the heck do you mean by us hanging out? Why would you be waiting outside my house all day long for me to come home just to hang out? And why do you want to be around me in the first place? It's been over ten years now since you and I got divorced, so what are you here for? There's only one reason why I'll be here for you right now. I'm here to make up with you. Get back together again. Huh? Make up? Are you saying that you want to remarry me or something like that? Well, it's been ten years since the divorce, and I'm sure that both of us have equally been through some tough situations since then, right? Recently, I had to swallow a tough pill regarding me becoming very sick. I didn't do anything about my symptoms for years, and when I finally went in to have him checked out, the doctor began to yell at me. He told me if I don't change my eating habits soon, I'll only have around five years left before I send myself into a comatose state. What? You only have five years? Right now, one of the most busy times for me at work, and I have no time to focus on changing my eating habits. But that doctor was very strict with me about how things need to change. So, I've realized that I really do need to do something about this. And what I need to do is get back together with you. <laughs> so, you're telling me that the only reason you want me back is to take care of you as you begin to fall apart? Well, you're supposed to care for me before things fall apart. And really, I've been so busy lately that I can't watch my diet. I haven't even been able to get any of my chores done lately, and all my laundry's just piling up. And I've started to totally forget about throwing out the trash. But if I'm able to remarry you, well then, I won't have to be worried about all that crap anymore. <laughs> get real, Jarrett. Who the hell do you think is going to come and be your housewife now? Why are you getting so upset with me? I heard some things about you. I heard that you had a baby and she happens to be my daughter. <laughs> Since she's a girl, she can even get some chores done around the house for me. Even at that young of an age. You're not going to be the only one doing all the chores this time, so it's the problem, right? Huh? Not only do you plan to have me do your chores, but you want to make my daughter do them as well? 
Well, I'm not getting remarried to you, Jared, and that's not going to change. Excuse me? You actually gonna say no to me, supporting the both of you financially over here? I know dang well that as a single mother, your life is a living hell right now. So stop trying to make this more difficult than it is. Come back to my place. Marry me. Like hell I will. I know that the money you're bringing in is only barely enough to get by with. <laughs> it has to be painful living in that small house with your daughter. When you don't even have the money to give her a good Christmas. So, come back. Marry me. And I'll make sure you both have a wonderful life again. I just recently been promoted to department leader, so... I'll have a lot of money coming in now. And that means a lot of money for both you and our daughter as well. <laughs> Stop trying to talk badly about the money I bring in. You haven't even been paying child support to me for the last ten years, and I've done just fine raising my daughter with what I make. So if you have become a department manager now, then do us both a favor and start paying up. I seriously never believed for one second that you actually gave birth to a child back then. <laughs> but I guess you never were some fatty whose stomach was full of crap. <laughs> and just like that, I've remembered all the reasons why I hate you so much, Jarrett. You. You called someone who was pregnant with your child a fat loser. You were the worst frickin' husband on this planet, and are still running as the worst man! Yeah, but starting very soon, I'm gonna be the best husband and father ever. <laughs> huh? I'm sure that my daughter wants to come be with a real father, right? I know that all children need to have a balanced family to be raised in, and that means having both parents in the house with them. I'm sure she's had more than enough time spent with you. Well, she want a father figure in her life now. So, you really should just shut up. Come marry me already. If you really care about your daughter, then you should be running over to my side right now. <laughs> Our daughter needs a father in her life, right? <laughs> you shut up, you annoying old fart! Uh, huh? I don't need a dad if he's going to be like you. So stop trying to talk like you know what I want! I am, uh... Am I talking to my daughter right now? your daughter, you weirdo. All I am to you is a stranger. Do you even know my name? I bet you don't. And I don't need a dad that doesn't even know his daughter's name. All I need is my mom, and that's it. So stay away from my mom and never marry her again. Hey, hey, hey. Why are you saying things like that to your own father? I'm your father, after all. And I'm here to take you back home with me. We haven't been able to meet for the last ten years, but that old time I've been wanting to meet you. I'm having to hear my own daughter, who I've been wanting to meet so bad to call me an old fort. If you keep lying to us, we're going to call the police again. Did you know we can do that to you? Huh? My teacher told me about things like this at school. That those who lie are bad people, and the police will take them to jail. <laughs> Yo, your, your father isn't lying to you about anything right now. I'm telling you this whole time I've been wanting to come see you. No, you haven't. I know that you hate me, and you never wanted me. And that's why before I was ever born, you divorced Mom and told her to go away. You never wanted to see your own daughter, and that's why you made us leave, right? That... That was never what happened. I think this whole time your mother's just been talking poorly about your father. And that's made you upset. You can see that your mom is the only mean person here, right? <laughs> my mom would never lie to me about anything. Also, my grandma has told me stories about you. She told me that right before I was born, you ran off and never spoke to my mom again. What? Your grandma? So, now that you've even heard it from my daughter, you can give up now, right? I understand that to a small kid it's important for them to have both a mother and a father figure in their lives. But my daughter doesn't want you to be her father figure, so... I mean, she even showed that dislike for you to me by snatching my own phone right away from my hands and texting you all of that. So that's why I've been saying that you and I will not be getting remarried. Hold on just a second. Who the hell is this grandma she was talking about? 
I heard from you that your mom died ages ago. You never had anyone like a mother figure around you since then, right? So you're never able to go back to anyone like your mom or dad after giving birth to her, right? Well, this is your mother we're talking about here. After what you'd done to me, your mother came to my side and made sure to care for both myself and my baby when we needed someone. And she's done a great job being a grandma to my girl. What? Yo, <laughs> you been talking to my parents still? And they've never said a thing to me in bed? Not just talking with them, but staying with them as well. I'm actually with your mom right now. And this whole time, your mom and dad have been looking over my shoulder at the conversation we've been having. Excuse me? I got a text earlier today from my daughter about how there was some old man pacing back and forth in front of our house. And so I had your parents take care of her while I was still at work and had them call the police on you as well. And once I had finished my work, I went over to their place where I'm currently staying now. And just a bit after arriving here, you happened to start texting me. So this whole time you and I have been texting, they've been sitting around me watching. They live in the same neighborhood as you. Hey, tell me how the hell that happened. I haven't even been able to get in touch with my parents for the past few years. So why are they there with you while I'm texting you? Wait, just after our divorce, they told me they'd sell their house and move far away. It's moving into this neighborhood, what they meant by that? Huh? You knew that they would be moving over here, right? Never had the chance to learn about where they'd be moving to. I just assumed the day they told me they were moving, and they'd never contact me again, meant that they went another state or something. <laughs> well, I guess if they didn't contact you afterwards, you wouldn't have known. I mean, your parents were very upset with you when they heard about what you called and did to me. <laughs> When I told them that you called your own pregnant wife a fat loser, they flipped. <laughs> and that's why I never bothered to really text them after they left. When I learned this time that I was really sick, I thought it'd be a great time to go back to my family's house. I started trying to call them both, but they'd never pick up. And when I texted asking their address, they just left me on red. Been a real pain in the butt for me. I see, I see. And so that's the reason why you're now trying to get your ex-wife to care for you? Why my parents moving to the same neighborhood as you did? And what's this going on between you two, acting like you're all still family? Did you know that the reason your parents moved into this neighborhood was for my daughter and I? They told me they'd take full responsibility for their dumb son. And that they'd do everything in their power to make sure my daughter and I live a happy and safe life. And just like they said, they moved into a house down the street and have been taking care of us since. You kidding me? And it's because of them both that right after having my baby, I was able to get back out there and find new work. And as time's gone on, they have stuck around to make sure that my daughter gets to where she needs to be while I'm working. Just like today, when she told me there was a strange old man standing out front, I was able to ask your parents to take her in. I'm being serious when I say that your parents are some of the best people on this planet. Stop it with that crap. They aren't the best people anywhere. They haven't even barred talk to their own son for the past ten years, so they never even had a son in the first place. Yet they're totally fine acting like you're their daughter, and your kid's their grandbaby. This is all completely screwed up. They should be caring about me and my problems. No, they shouldn't. Your parents have already told me that they never want to see or hear from you again, so why would they ever come and help you now? As far as they're aware, their real son passed away a decade ago and was replaced by an imposter. They always say things like that to all their friends, actually. <laughs> huh? And unlike their dead son, they still have a breathing and cute grandchild to look after. And they want to make sure that their dead son's ex-wife is taken care of as well. So now, good luck to you and that fake sickness of yours. Not only do your parents and my daughter not want you in their lives, but neither do I or the rest of the people in this neighborhood. Yo, you have to wait. This is all just a joke, right? Do you really think I'm going to believe that everyone is going to throw me away now? If I can't find someone to change my diet and clean my house to me, I only have five years at most left in me. You're not a freaking baby anymore, so you should be able to care for yourself, right? 
Even my own daughter is able to care for herself more than you can, which is pretty embarrassing, right? So if you really want to keep calling yourself her father, then you need to show us that you can actually do more than sit around and cry all day. Please, Angelica. Can't you at least hold on to me for a bit longer? I'm not going to say anything as selfish as wanting you to marry me again anymore, but I at least want you to stay by my side. Help me out. Huh? I just got a message from my parents finding the other day. Been about a decade since I last heard a thing from them. When I started to think that they were beginning to worry about their sick son, they started to blow up on me. They kept telling me to stay away from everyone in their family, including you. That from now on, they're completely cutting ties to me. We'll make sure you and your daughter do too. It's about time those two told you how they feel about you. I'm sure having to hear how angry they are with you from those two themselves has really shined a light on how horrible of a person you are, right? I was watching them when they wrote those texts to you, and your dad had a face on him that even the devil would respect. It made my daughter cry seeing him that angry. Never thought that my parents would ever tell me they don't want me anymore. Parents should normally want to come and help their kid when they become sick, right? It's a rat, right? Instead of you. You'll never leave me like they have, right? We've already been married before, so there's nothing that could make you throw me away, right? I'm sure that since then you still hold on to some feelings for me, right? Not at all, Jarrett. And as for ever thinking about getting back together with you, those thoughts died the moment you kicked me out of your house ten years ago. Huh? <laughs> and besides, I've been really busy since then being a single mother. I have to work on my own, I have to do all the chores at home on my own, and I have to raise my daughter to be a good woman mostly on my own. It's a tough life for me that's kept me busy for so, so long. So ever since you left me, there hasn't been a single ounce of interest in someone like you. <laughs> Thanks. So, so you, you never even once thought about making things right with me again, getting back together. Even during this past week, you haven't thought anything about me. I thought for sure you would have started to notice the great man I am again. Why would I ever want to start thinking about you again? I have no reason to. And like I said before, who the hell would want to get remarried to you? I told you that I wouldn't be selfish in asking you to marry me again. I just want you to come and visit me a few times each week. Heck, just a few times a month would be fine with me. When you come over, all I ask is you to take care of me for a day. Jesus, Jarrett. Back when I was able to eat your cooking, I never had to worry about getting sick from it. And having you handle all the chores in the house for me made it so I could stay healthy. And now that you've been gone for ten years, I really need you back in my life. So you're asking me to just come over and do all the chores for you now? That's even more selfish than you just asking me to marry you, you fat idiot. I've been wanting to pay you, though. I think this could make for a great opportunity for you to make some extra cash. How about $300 a month for your services? How does that sound? That should be enough to pique your interest a bit, right? You think $300 is enough to get me to come back to that hellhole and care for the most hated man on this planet? <laughs> for Christ's sake, Jarrett, don't make me laugh too much. <laughs> Lan, how does $1,000 sound? Would that work for you? Not just that, but I'll start paying child support as well. From now on, I'll take the responsibility of her father. Make sure she gets that child support. So please, don't throw me away, because I'll be willing to give you that much. Sorry, Jarrett. <laughs> no matter how much you offer, something that impossible will never happen. And at this point, we don't need child support from you. Really, no matter what you try and offer me, it's not going to happen. What? If you really need someone to come over and wipe your butt that badly, then maybe look into hiring a pro housemaid or something. But, but if I hire a housemaid, I have to pay them more than I want to. They'll be a complete stranger to me, trying to feel my need for love. I want my family to come back to me, be by my side again. Really? Please listen to what I'm asking for. I'm seriously sick right now. Every day has been hell for me because my body is hurting so much. And on days off from work, I can't even get out of bed and have to lay here on my side all day. 
But even now, I don't want a pro caring for me. I just want someone that I know personally to be here, to care for my needs, to have love. And I completely understand how you feel right now. Back when I was pregnant, I felt the exact same way as you do now. I was in a lot of pain half the time due to my large belly, and I always felt sick to the point I wanted you around me to help out. It was a feeling of just wanting someone I love to be there with me, showing how much they care by doing the chores and cooking for me. That's right. So you really do understand how I feel now. So please, Angelica, since you really do understand me, you can come and help. Huh? Just because I understand you doesn't mean I care to be there for you. I already made myself clear by saying it's impossible. What? Huh? When I was feeling that way, you never once came to help me or even cared to understand how I was feeling, right? And not only did you not help me, but you turned all of that against me and started to talk crap about me for it. You called me a fat loser and all of that, right? And you even now still doubt that I was ever even pregnant in the first place. You think I'm going to come and help you now after all of that? Uh, um, well, that was... Your parents already told you, right? That you are never to come and talk to any of us ever again, right? I guess even a man as old as you has a hard time understanding English. When they ask you to stop talking to us, that means you put down your phone and never text or call me ever again. It means to never be around us ever again because none of us want to remember those horrible memories you left us all with. The whole reason you are all alone now with nobody to help you is all due to the actions you took against everyone, and you deserve every bit of it. After that, Jarrett's sickness ended up getting a lot worse, and he had to be taken to the hospital in an ambulance. But while he was in the hospital for a bit being cared for due to his super high blood pressure and terrible diet, he would call out to all his nurses asking for them to marry him and be his housewife, and then complain about how terrible being a single man was. But because of his behavior, the president of the hospital came down for a surprise visit to his room and told him that he was being discharged and would never be admitted into his hospital again. And since then, he's had to take day after day off work due to his sickness only getting worse. And his boss told him that his pay would be cut due to him never coming in enough. And so as of right now, he's been locked in his landfill-like house for a while, doing whatever work he can remotely while never getting any chores done. As for what my daughter had called him back then, an old fart, she told me she learned that from some of the high schoolers on the block. She said to me that they told her whenever an older man does something to me that I don't like, to call them that and run away. And so I made sure to tell her not to call anyone else that kind of name, besides the old fart that's locked up in his house right now.